Hello everyone, welcome to Taslima Maya Art. Thank you for joining me on my channel, I do appreciate it. I hope you will have a chance to look at some of my other videos. And do press the like, share and subscribe buttons if you would like to be notified of future videos. In today's step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create this bubble art on a swipe and chain pull acrylic pour with Arabic calligraphy and gold leaf. This work is inspired by the wonderful work of Veronica Me. Do check out the channel if you haven't already, it's called Me Paintings. So today I am extremely excited to have been invited as a guest artist on Perspectives in Pouring with the extremely talented Sheldon Briscoe of Shell Rock Art and the multi-technique queen Britta Clayton of Britta Clayton Design. Stay tuned to see what exciting things they have in store for us right after this video. So let's get started. So for this piece I used this pouring medium and that was one part Dela Rowney pouring medium to two parts craft PVA and one part water that was then mixed with my paints at roughly 60 to 40 ratio, so 60% pouring medium and 40% paint. I used a number of rainbow colours as you can see across the top of my screen there and I will put the exact brands um, into my description box below so you can see what colours I used. The consistency should be fluid with a small mount trace as you can see and this should be the same for all of the colours equally. Parts of this video have been sped up for your convenience so this isn't real time mixing um, when I'm going crazy I'm actually mixing quite slowly so as not to trap too many air bubbles within my paint. I then go ahead and mix up the rest of the colours in exactly the same way so all of them have got similar consistency as you can see and I do adjust the pouring medium um, according to the tube and, and the consistency of the tube paints. Here I am about to mix up the base paint and this is Montmartre Titanium White um, and I'm using the exact same pouring medium as before again at 60 to 40 ratio. Okay, so as you can see there, I'm about to stir this up thoroughly um, and make sure you mix it well. And as you can see that there's a steady stream um, coming off the end of my um, stir stick there, of my palette knife. And the next thing I do is add coconut hair serum and I decide to put two um, pet drops into each of those colours. Um, all the product list um, for anything I use are all in the description box for the video. So if you've got um, any questions about what products I'm using, um, you should be able to find uh, the products in my description box and also sometimes the links to um, where I purchased them from. And just so you know, I did not add any hair serum into my white base paint. And the next thing to do was to give them all a little stir, just to make sure it's distributed properly in there. And as you know, if you mix it quite a lot, you tend to get smaller cells. And for this painting, I did want smaller cells, so I did give it a good stir um, and make sure that the hair serum was fully mixed in. Now the canvas that I'm using here is a 30 by 40 centimeter canvas with a deep edge as you can see. So it's a quality canvas, 
uh, and I've prepped it by spraying the bath with water and allowing it to dry to make it more taut and I'm ensuring that it's level on my surface and giving all my paints a quick mix and getting my palette knife ready. The first thing that I do then is pull my white face on and level it out with a palette knife. So I didn't really need a very thick base um, and I ensured that it was more or less um, level across the whole canvas. I also covered the sides with the white base paints and I did this off camera to save time. Strangely I do enjoy this part, it is a bit like spreading icing on a cake um, or buttercream on a cake even um, and it's, it's really quite therapeutic I find. So it's nice to kind of put some music on, chill out and just go through the process, having a bit of fun with it. Um, and then here I add a bit more paint in the middle um, because that's where all my colours are going to go and I start adding each of my colours. And I do try and follow the rainbow colours in succession. Um, so I just wanted to see what would happen if I just pop them all, you know, orange next to red and then maybe just layer them across each other a bit as well. And then obviously yellow next. Oh, I think this was actually gold. So you'll see a description of my colours or my paints in the description box as I said. And then I move on from the gold with some green. Um, and I just sort of layer them across the middle there. Now the idea for this one was to have um, a swipe right across the middle of the canvas um, and have some negative space at the top and the bottom um, and that was the plan for this because I wanted to use a different technique as well which is the chain pull technique and I wanted to combine the two techniques the swipe and the chain pull to create a, a kind of a piece of art that um, would be slightly different to what I'm used to doing I then go over it with a torch now to make sure any bubbles within the paint um, can be got rid of and then I begin to swipe. Now this is a piece of plastic, it's kind of like a file divider, perspex type of plastic um, and I'm just doing my first swipe and I choose to do two swipes with this one um, just to see what would happen and to get those colours intermingling a bit more. I'm just touching up the side there because I've got that excess paint on my um, piece of plastic there um, and it's quite a steady piece of plastic it's really really useful actually you can just wash it off afterwards and reuse it but then I'm doing my second reverse swipe now and you can see all the other colors coming out which are really very pretty and already within seconds you can see lots of um, cells emerge and that is actually from the coconut hair mm -hmm. serum that I used and the torch just helps bring that up a bit more as well um, and I'll do a little close-up in a minute, but it didn't really take long for those cells to emerge. Um, some of this video is actually um, sped up a little, um, and other times it's not, so um, I think this bit was slightly sped up. But you can see that it does not take that long for the cells to emerge, and there's a lot of beautiful lacing across this one. So we've got the purples, pinks, the turquoise there, the bright green, and the lacing itself, it's actually red, which is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, this is the point where I'm actually quite impressed with this so far. Um, and now I'm going on to do the technique, the chain pull technique. And I'm not really sure how I should do this, but I decide that I want some of that negative space to have some color in it, not too much, just a little bit. And I just trail the chain across the bottom there and I pull it right down to create those wonderful coloured lines and I do exactly the same thing at the top. I feel like this is a really nice little effect, um, you know it just kind of brings it all together but if I were to do it again I think I would have put a bit more paint across the bottom and across the top there as well but it is really pretty if you can see. Yes, this is the wet result and it's a close-up so you can see that um, actually it's really quite nice so um, it's it's perfect and I have to wait for it to dry 
to do the embellishments uh, of the bubbles so that I'm planning for it. This, this is now the dry result. You can see um, my lighting isn't brilliant here and I'm casting a shadow over it, so sorry about that. But I am um, quite impressed with it. I noticed that that hair serum, which is a brand I've not used before, um, creates a lot of smaller cells and, and different types of cells where they're kind of intermingled compared to the silicon oil that I'm used to using as you have seen in my other videos. I hope you can see the tiny tiny little bubbles as well across where the chain swipe was done. There's some really pretty tiny little bubbles within that paint and the lines. Um, and that's a really interesting effect, I've not seen that before, but it's really, really nice. And here are some close-ups of some of the lacing, some really pretty red lacing here, and lots of different colours within the pore itself. And you can see what that looks like, I hope. My friends, so we have the finished pore, um, and I'm going to start um, by cleaning it off. Okay, so I'm going to clean this and then I'm going to do this in a second. So, spray liquid in here, just water and very liquid. And then I'm going to just spray a couple of um, squirts of this into this water. Let's do this first. So I want to show you a really exciting new tool that I've got um, and this is called a circle drawing tool um, and you can get another one which is much more pricier than this one um, by Maker's Cabinet called the Iris a Circle Drawing Tool which is far more pricey but this one is a kind of a cheaper version of that and it's really exciting because you can draw perfect circles in different diameters and you can choose what diameter you want obviously by twisting it and you can place them across your canvas um, and then quite simply draw um, a circle quite well, quite easily now if you don't have one of these, you can use anything else you have around your house, like cups, um, you know, anything that's circular, and you can use those to draw your bubbles onto the canvas. Um, but I just want to mention that this was a product that Veronica Me mentions on her videos, because she draws a lot of bubble bubbles on her art, um, and it's just a really nice thing to have. I mean, this cost me about £20. Um, in total, so it wasn't extremely pricey. The Maker's Cabinet ones are upwards of £100. So, you know, if you can stretch with your budget to it, it is a really nice thing to own. But otherwise, there's plenty of things around the house that you can use instead. And here I am simply finding interesting parts of my pool and drawing different diameter circles, perfect circles, um, over them. So this is something that you just follow your gut instinct with as, a, as, a, as an artist and I'm choosing different size bubbles here, for different size circles because my plan for this piece is to actually um, embellish those bubbles with some calligraphy, Arabic calligraphy um, and here I have another few products, new products to me that I've not used before. This is Mixian Paste um, and Gold Leaf 
and I'm really excited to be using this in this piece. So I use the Nixian paste to outline these circles that I've drawn with my whiteboard marker. Um, and it's pretty easy to do this. I mean, as you can see, it doesn't take long. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect either. So, you know, those circles don't have to be completely perfect if you don't want them to be. And I'm just drawing um, the paste onto the canvas you know, on top of those um, white lines. And I wait a little bit for that to dry a little bit and go clear. And then as soon as that mixed in paste is semi-clear, I put my gold leaf over the top very gently. And gold leaf is very delicate um, and you have to handle it with care. And um, I'm quite excited to be using gold leaf for the first time ever and hope to use it in further pe uh, future projects. But I just lay the gold leaf, as you can see, very gently over the top of the mixed in paste and use a very soft makeup brush or soft bristle brush to tap it down and make sure it adheres properly to the sticky mixing paste and it does that quite, quite quickly actually um, and then I simply brush off the excess gold leaf so I'll rip a bit off and put it onto the other bubbles and tap it down and this is a really fun part of this project I really enjoyed this part it was just it just felt really creative and the look of the gold leaf as well you know the, the beautiful golden mm. color um, on the bubbles on the outside of those bubbles it just looks fantastic and I can tell you I will be using gold leaf and silver leaf um, again in future projects because it was great fun um, and you know some of these products were well, quite a few of the products in this video are, are new to me um, so exciting to be using those. And now that all the gold leaf is on, I'm simply using another slightly harder brush to um, take off the excess. I brush off the excess of the gold leaf and it comes off really quickly as you can see um, and leaves those um, bubble outlines really, really stunningly golden in colour with gold leaf on it. The next part of the process is to add the shading, so I use black acrylic paint to add a bit of shading using a very small brush across the top uh, inner part of the bubbles and here I'm doing the lower part so I'm putting the highlights in the, with using white um, titanium white acrylic paint with a small brush and I'm just adding in some of the highlights at the bottom of the bubble and the inner side of the bubble. Um, and initially I just sort of put the paint in and I blend it out slowly. Um, so I'm putting quite a fair bit of white paint in there. And this is the same process that I did with the upper part of the bubble with the black paint. Um, and then I add a tiny bit of water to my brush and I blend that white out into the inner part of the bubble. So you can see me doing that now. This was the first time ever um, of me trying a bubble or doing bubble art. Um, mm -hmm. So it was quite exciting. Um, and there was also quite a lot of trial and error. So as you can see, that white line was quite thick, but I thinned it back down again um, as I felt it was too thick. And here I am now blending it out um, again. So I thinned it right back down and then again tried to blend it out again. 
But that's the beauty of art, you can just redo something if you don't like it or if you make a mistake and go over it again. So here's my second layer of white paint then on the bubbles so as you can see it's coming together really well. Now the next stage was to get the Arabic writing right and, and to fit into each of those bubbles. So I used some tracing paper to outline the size of the or diameter of the bubbles and I found some Arabic calligraphy online. Um, and I use um, the tracing paper then to trace the Arabic calligraphy onto um, each of those bubbles. So obviously I had to make them different sizes and that was easy to do on my phone by um, expanding it or making it smaller. And then I transferred those um, the Arabic writing onto my canvas and then over it with a black marker. Now if you're wondering what the Arabic writing says, it's actually some of the words for descriptions of the 99 names of God or descriptions of God such as uh, the merciful, the kind, the source of peace. Al-Quddus for example means the most sacred. So overall this makes this piece of art really really meaningful, particularly for people from the Muslim faith. Uh, Arabic calligraphy itself is stunning in my view. The final touch for me to finish it off was to add some white highlights using a gel pen around the lettering and that's it. I will be filling the bubbles in with some resin and finishing it off with a bit of varnish for the rest of it. So that's it for today from me, thank you for keeping me company on the journey. Up next is Sheldon Briscoe from Shell Rock Arts. I'll see you in the live.